Hello, I'm Michael Hainsworth, and I am in the last of 50 Cold War bunkers buried deep in the forests of Canada. The Diefen Bunker was the communications hub, so the men in black could crack the codes of the enemy. It also has one of the most powerful computers of the 1950s. But no one could have predicted that quantum computers could crack the codes of countries and companies. Meet Nick and Chris. They're going to help me unbox quantum safe networks. Gentlemen, ready? So Chris, cryptography must have evolved substantially since they built this bunker in the 50s. It's changed incredibly since that time frame. Back in the late 1950s, a famous physicist by the name of Richard Feynman said that if you think you understand quantum mechanics, you don't understand quantum mechanics. And now we're talking about quantum 2.0. Quantum 2.0 is the idea of using quantum mechanics to actually perform meaningful functions. So instead of just experimenting with electrons, we're actually able to perform computations. We're actually able to do things that we were never imaginable. That's all great in the right hands. But there are wrong hands as well, and bad actors are sucking up our data off the internet now so they can decrypt it later? With HNDL, they're intercepting and storing our sensitive data for decryption later with quantum computers. Government data, health records, financial information, intellectual property. So HNDL is a really big factor now going forward. Oh, Nick just used an acronym. You know what that means. It's time for the acronym game. HNDL. Harvest now, decrypt later. Correct. DRQC. Cryptographically relevant quantum computer, a quantum computer strong enough to break existing cryptography. SKI. Symmetric key infrastructure, often physics-based, and can include quantum key distribution, or QKD. PQC. Right, po post-quantum cryptography. These are mathematics-based ciphers that are believed to be safe against a quantum attack at various network layers. It's a tie! So Nick, as you point out, it's not just governments that need to be concerned about bad actors. So obviously think about governments and defense, but also think about mission critical networks. Think about our power grids. Think about our water supplies. But also think about data centers and the amount of sensitive data that they're processing as part of our daily lives. And we need to secure that network, but also the data center. And there's a perception that it's the data center's responsibility for all of it. And it's really a shared responsibility. The data center operator needs to be concerned about securing data both in the data center as well as across the network that connects to other data centers and other locations. And how do they do that? They need to be thinking not only of one protection, but actually several protections, so that if one were to fail, there's a backup. This is what we commonly call defense in depth. I've learned that defense in depth means a layered security strategy that ensures that no single failure can compromise an entire system. If one layer is compromised, the others hold strong. Can you show me defense in depth? Let's go and show you. Okay, so what's behind the air? So Michael, behind us we have some of our IP portfolio that we use to deliver quantum safe network outcomes. So with this uh, portfolio, we can use SKI, but we can also use PQC. So we use a blend of technologies across the portfolio and across our IP crypto technologies. Okay, and then you've got the optical layer. Behind us are also a set of elements that are part of the optical transport portfolio, which also provide protection at what's sometimes called layer one. And that's done utilizing technologies such as SKI, 
within which there are the ability to either use classic physics-based keys or quantum physics-based keys. And together, these things provide multiple layers of protection. If one fails, the other can pick up, and we call that crypto resilience. So you're combining math and physics together, which sort of breaks my brain a little bit. But if I was a network administrator, I'd like to know the top three steps for how to build a quantum safe network. Step number one, take inventory. Look at what you've already got in place. Step two, well, our customers need to prioritize the systems and the connections that they need to protect. And then we can start thinking about a roadmap. Step three. Nokia is not alone on this. In other words, we encourage our customers to work with a set of partners that are, have expertise in areas even outside of Nokia's expertise. So there is a whole ecosystem of companies and technology partners that can fill out a complete quantum safe protection mechanism for, for any, uh, any customer. Well, gentlemen, this has been fascinating. Thank you so much for your time. I, I have to confess though, I don't know how much of this I'm gonna be able to remember. Michael, you're not gonna remember anything.